Hi, I'm Scotty. Welcome to my channel, Scotty's Clock World. Thanks for dropping by. There's our completed tapered pin that we'll be putting into the back cock in a moment to support the suspension spring. But in the meantime, before when I was trying to get the pendulum leader out of the crutch and it just wasn't going around that corner at all, which is a pretty tight little corner there. And purely by accident, I discovered that there is in actual fact now that it's out it's easy to see not before there's a little piece cut out of either side there and by aligning it in the bottom of the crutch you can then turn it round and it goes in and there it is it's not going to fall out that's back to front at the moment i'll take that out and put it in the correct way which is that away but that's something we've learned all right now, first up, we've got to put the suspension spring into the back cock. We line it up as best we can. Crutch around the other way. And then put our new tapered pin into the hole and move it backwards and forwards till it slides in. And there it is. Now we'll press that in tightly with a pair of pliers. What we do now is we now put the pendulum leader into the suspension spring and then align the pivot into its bush there. That's got him, all right. And we can now, the back cock is now ready to go into the movement. So we'll put the pallets in and find where the bushing is. And there it is. If I can get a bit of light on it, I can see it. That's got him all right. Now, we'll let that sit there. We'll get our screw holding screwdriver. Align one of the screws into it. And then in either side, it doesn't particularly matter. Put a screw in very loosely just to hold it. We're not tightening it down. Right, now we'll get the other one. Same thing, screw a holding screwdriver again, clamp it down, line the hole on the back cock with the back plate, and put the screw in. Don't screw it down all the way, you'll twist the ends of that screwdriver. The reason we use a screw holding screwdriver is because it makes it easier to get a start on putting the screw into the hole. All right, now I'll tighten those two down. We'll check them later on. They won't be correctly set up yet, but we'll do that later. Now, catch that over there. If you find this video helpful, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. I'll put a little bit of power on the, on the great wheel. And, yep, too deep. All right, I'll lift that up a tiny little bit. As I said, we'll get this sorted properly later on, but we just want to make sure that it's not looking too bad. Bit of pressure on that. And there we go. You can see the escape wheel turning. All right, so we'll adjust that correctly later on. It's not right at the moment. We'll get the crutch sorted later on. All right, now, round to the front. Now, where's our bits and pieces for that? First up, the hour wheel plastic so we've got to be careful of it. it sits there the snail goes on next that aligned on there we have to put this washer over the hour wheel which just sits there and then we have a c-clip that goes on that to hold all that together there it is there black on black not easy to see all right i'll put that there make sure it's down flat and now I'll gently, using a pair of pliers, clip that into place. Is that? No, it hasn't gone in yet. All right. Well, give it a little bit more then. It's got to sit down into that little dish there. I think that's down now. Yep. Okay, so they're right. Now we want the rack. And the rack goes on there 
where the rack goes. Yep, that's all right. And it also has a little C-clip, which I'll get out of the container. Maybe, that's got him, thank you. We'll get a larger pair of tweezers, make it a bit easier to place it. And that goes on there. So, move that in just a tiny bit with a pair of pliers. We don't want it to go flying around the room. Here we go, that's got him. All right, Rack and Snail are back on again. Well, I think now I'll probably oil the movement and then we'll put it on a test stand, put some weights on it and see how it runs. And then we can make adjustments to it accordingly. All right, we'll do the back plate first. Get some of my Mobius clock oil out and one of my oilers and we'll systematically work our way up the movement oiling all the pivots as we go double amount of oil on the the great wheels and one drop on all the rest on the pivots here one on there turn it round one on the fly. Warning wheel. And the star wheel. All right. Now we'll turn that over. And we'll do the other side. Starting with a couple of drops on the great wheel of both trains. Put a couple on the rack that's got a decent sized pin under it. Now see what we've got inside here. Escape wheel. Warning wheel, and the fly, star wheel, and it'll be easier to roll the movement over and then put a drop down on the maintenance cam down there. I think we've got everything. Now we need a drop on the leading face and the trailing face. There we go. Make sure we got that covered. Yeah, that's all right. All right, so the movement's all back together again now. And I'll put that on a test stand and attach some weights to it. We'll start doing some tests to see how it works. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about antique and vintage clock repair, be sure to hit the subscribe button or become a channel member to watch my videos ad-free. Thank you to my supporters, Don Dressel, David Phillips, Graham F.P., Robert Hornman, Mike Messerschmidt, Stephen Watts, Sidus, Rolf, Tony Paisley, Jeff Clements, Whitney Kovner, Walt Morgan, Dennis O'Connor, Robert Baldwin, Douglas Mueller, John, Martin Olivia, Douglas Rowlandson, Bill Leeds, Getzep, Brooks Rowand, Jim Scarladorn, Rodney Van Meter and Elizabeth Smith.